it shows a time in which you can't see anymore and in three dimensions. So it has, it has an accessibility a lot of other exhibits uh, don't have because people immediately seem to relate to them. It's the art of the diorama, each piece meticulously chosen and placed. From the sketches in the wild to the last speck of paint, these can take years to complete. And Clarence Telenius gave decades of his life to bring that outdoor experience inside. It provides us with an opportunity to, you know, interact with, you know, a big moose that, quite frankly, I don't want to meet in the forest, but I'm really glad to see this guy, you know, up close and personal. <laughs> he was somewhat different in that he incorporated the animals right into the backdrop rather than just in front of. And you can see that it continues and gives you a much greater sense of depth than you even get in the diorama. Great depth can be seen in all five of Telenius's dioramas at the Man Manitoba Museum and great lengths were taken to get them here. For the research for the diorama, he, he actually did uh, uh, go out and, you know, experience a buffalo stampede just about all around him. He, he was up in Wood Buffalo National Park and he created a blind of tree trunks and that sort of thing and then had the park staff drive the herd of bison towards him. He put himself right in harm's way of a charging, you know, herd of bison coming at him. Well, you know, they did break and go around the blind, but some of them could have gone over top and we might not have seen much of Clarence after that. But that was the degree of the accuracy. And so when you look at the, when you look at the dioramas, you look at his work, you know, you see the strain of the muscles, you see the fear of the animals or that sort of thing. A moment later, with a sinuous roll and bulge of water, a large brown animal climbs out on the battered trunk of a stranded log and looks about him. Pale yellow-gray of color, chin and throat deepens on sides and back into rich glossy purple-brown, which contrasts with the elm trunk's orange wood where the rocks have borne away the bark. Lengthy descriptions accompanied his prints, part of his passion as an educator. He was a great painter, this despite losing his painting arm in a construction accident in the 1920s. By the 30s, he had mastered his craft and began painting these. They were windows into the wilderness when there were few ways to look in. This looks like it might be the Carberry Sand Hills uh, area that he's dealing with. There. We didn't have color TV, we didn't have hundreds of coffee table books on in nature. He was concerned about having people become aware of and take pride in wildlife. And so he was essentially documenting a previous time or a time that was passing away. Clarence Delaney passed away in January. Friends and colleagues want him to be remembered for the environmentalist that he was. Thousands of people came through as a school system learning to appreciate animals thanks to his work. When I see the dioramas that Clarence has produced, I very much remember the man. And uh, he was so accessible, he was so generous, he mentored so many other um, artists and, and uh, uh, people who are interested in the environment. And I really appreciate the legacy. We are so honoured at the Manitoba Museum to have this Clarence Telenius legacy. There are 18 of Telenius's dioramas in museums across Canada, giving life to great moments that have graced this world and passed on. For Shaw TV, I'm Kim Kasher.